what's good y'all it's your boy ross back at again with another video so we're gonna check out this is absolutely perfect for la night yeah shout out to the homie the great one man link to the original video will be down below this segment on this uh week's monday night raw was perfect it was fantastic granted doesn't really make sense because la night is a smackdown guy and you know miz is on monday night raw but you know what if they're gonna go have a program together and it started from the uh slim jim battle royal when uh la night eliminated the miz and i guess you know that's where they they start to you know build their feud off of or build their uh their feud from even though they're on separate brands i'm okay with it because this segment alone was fantastic both on the miz and la night uh, side of things so i want to see what he has to say about it this was a really really good segment and if we're gonna get a few this is a good one i'm i am all for it i think a lot of people are let's get right into this one see what he has to say la night yeah god that was hilarious my man got a pop even while being roasted i don't know about you guys but i'm <laughs> very excited about this rivalry you may believe that la night deserves more maybe he should go for the world heavyweight champion not yet but i believe this rivalry is perfect for la night right now we have two very similar guys with major differences and it mm -hmm. already got personal and la night's promo was great if you're not a hardcore wrestling fan or you don't like la night that much this was a promo that probably resonated with most people it's kind of wild man money and i troll was not that bad we got yeah. a shinsuke heel turn chad gable finally getting a push and this promo which might end up being one of the best promos of the year it is kind of odd though that we got a rivalry between a raw and a smackdown superstar. like i just said little mark in me just lights up and i want to complain about wwe breaking the craft room but i'm gonna let it slide because this is exciting one of the yeah. best things i liked about this episode of raw is the fact that we got new commentary My Michael Cole is the GOAT. One of the guys that always had the reputation of being the worst commentator in WWE history mm -hmm. for whatever reason. I don't even know why. I actually always liked Cole. I was too scared to admit it. I even like this crap, man. Yeah. I did not like that version. I think it was just... It was... It was, I guess, obviously Vince <laughs> barking orders on what he wanted him to say verbatim or whatnot. Um, That kind of probably uh messed up the flow for his commentary i wasn't a big fan of him during this period he was unbearable for me but <clears throat> after you know vince retired and they kind of let kind of let him you know just go out there and have free reign he's in my opinion been pretty pretty uh entertaining to like hear and watch when they you know show him on camera especially his stuff his his back and forth with well not back and forth but his issues with dominic and his issues with uh <laughs> uh one of the members from top dollar uh um um no nah, i said one of the members of, from top dollar uh one of the members from hit row top dollar with the whole flop over the top rope and stuff like that like i like that back and forth his commentary in my opinion has improved and is much better and i enjoy it listening to him commentate and i'm glad they added him to monday night raw definitely freshens it up i think it was hilarious it was so bad it was kind of good. The show kicked off with the American Nightmare Cody Rhodes and he talked about his match against Brock Lesnar. Mm -hmm. Completely different vibe. He was like Cody respects Brock now. He said he didn't understand what happened after the match but his mother told him, dummy, don't you get it? He acknowledged you and now Cody feels invincible. He feels like he can beat anyone. No, stop. Cody, this ain't the title. Yeah. This ain't the championship. Facts. <laughs> That's exactly what I felt as soon as Seth came out there. I was like, no, no, just no. They keep teasing this after he finishes up with a feud. No, I don't want to see this. Not no. No. This is not the title you should be going for. Seth Rollins questions that point. He says, you said you can beat anyone. Why don't we put it to the test? Well, you kind of already did. Three times. Yeah. Lost all of these. Yeah. Seth. 
<laughs> don't you think? Of course, we got the Judgment Day. They were without Finn Balor. Priest says, you do not run Monday Night Raw. We run Raw. You don't dictate title shots. I do. Lesnar may be done with Cody, but Dominic is not. Dominic is the true workhorse of the WWE, not Cody. I don't want to see this feud again either, but I... We may end up seeing it again. I, I really don't. Cody. Finn Balor suddenly attacks Rollins and we got a brawl. We also got Sami Zayn with the save and it's clear we're getting that six man tag team match. But <laughs> Seth Rollins does not want to tag with Cody Rhodes. Which is something that WWE always used to forget. Oh, you guys had a rivalry back in the day. Oh, oh, he punt kicked your wife. No big deal. You're good guys right now, right? <laughs> you can work. Yeah, buddy, come on. Get over here, you're a sucker. <laughs> your back. So I'm glad that this is somewhat logical, at least. Mm -hmm. Six-man tag, huh? Raw. Six-man tag. Yep, Adam Pearce decided changed. to give these four men the opportunity to become the next intercontinental champion when he put them in a fatal four-way number one contenders match. Everyone is excited, and I absolutely love this. This picture alone makes me think, wow, the mid-card scene is looking really good. Wow, in that WWE. match was fantastic, too. Mid-card may not sound like a very prestigious word, I get it, but now since Gunter is the intercontinental champion, I think right now becoming a mid-card champion is a bigger deal than ever before. So For we sure. got the fatal four-way match. The show was in Chad Gable's hometown. He got a huge pop, and we know the rule in the WWE. When a match is happening in your hometown, you are probably going to lose. Well, first of all, the match was really, really Really, really fun. I yeah. just wish WWE would give us more triple threats, fatal four ways instead of multi man tag team matches. Like, I can't even explain how much more fun these are. And thankfully, Chad Gable actually mm -hmm. won the match. He's the number one contender. He even celebrated with his son, and that's just that's one of the most wholesome things I've ever seen. Facts. <laughs> it's so cute. Wholesome this moment. is wonderful, man. I know it's a bit early now, but I feel like Chad Gable might be the one to dethrone Gunter, and maybe he should. It's either Chad Gable or Sheamus. Maybe in the future we'll get another guy that is going to get that over and we want, you know, him to win the Intercontinental Champion. But for now, I say Sheamus or Chad Gable because, okay. man, this guy is over and he absolutely deserves it. He pretty much got the same way LA Knight did. He was just good. He connected with the audience. He's just that good. Mm -hmm. Very charismatic unbelievable in the ring people compare him to Kurt Angle a lot and I think that comparison is more legit than ever before mm -hmm. yes they're both Olympic wrestlers I get that comparison but Kurt Angle was unbelievable in the ring while also being very very yeah. charismatic and Chad Gable it's like his son so Kurt I say check that DNA test I think yeah man that if anybody should have been his son it should have been Chad but you know that's neither here nor there <laughs> it might not be Jordan for <laughs> Two reasons, actually. <laughs> Seth Rollins does not want to work with Cody, but Sami Zayn says, let's focus on the match. Let's try to get along because these men attacked Kevin Owens, which is your friend and your friend. I completely forgot about the Seth Rollins and Kevin Owens friendship. Now, the thing is, during that first segment, you can see that Sami Zayn got injured. My man got some sort yeah. of elbow boner. And the same thing what? happened to John Cena. From uh -huh. what I understand, it's not serious or possibly not serious or hopefully that's the case yeah he got another one sony devil is injured man these championships cursed this is 100 cursed la Knight is taking some photos and the miss is pissed he doesn't get the hype he feels like la Knight is over pushed which is kind of the story wwe are going with and i mm -hmm. absolutely love it more on that in a second we got bronson reed versus shinsuke nakamura it seems like shinsuke nakamura is getting some kind of a career resurgence because well it's bronson reed someone that wwe you know don't really want to lose from what i understand they're really high on bronson reed but we got this match which was fine and shinsuke nakamura actually picked up the yeah. W. Didn't think much of it until I've seen Sami Zayn getting injured by JD McDonough and Shinsuke Nakamura replaced him. But we got that smile and I was like, okay, maybe we're not getting a heel turn. Maybe not right now. But it seems like Shinsuke is... Uh, interested in that world heavyweight champion for sure this was a sneaky ass smile people yeah and as soon as he hit that sneaky little smile I was like he's gonna turn on him i know he is i i know that look of yes yes i will help you 
<laughs> By the way, JD might just join the Judgment Day, which is I'm not sold on it, man. I I don't care. I don't care. We saw Ludwig Kaiser hitting on Maxine. He I wouldn't have a problem. It depends on how they book it, and I like what they're doing with him now. So we'll see what they do with JD going forward. Talked crap about Otis, and she snapped. He turns around. Now it's Otis standing in front of him. How come Otis gets every girl in the WWE? <laughs> we got a Becky Lynch promo. We all know she is uh, pissed at Triple H right uh -huh. now, and uh, I don't know if WWE actually written it or she just came up with it herself. But uh, yeah, she was pissed. Well, first of all, during her promo, she talked about you know her match against Trish Stratus, how she wants to face her finally one on one. She says Trish is the greatest of her generation, and Becky is the greatest of this generation and the next one and the next after that we see stark she says you might be the man but you left your balls at home and becky lynch says you just don't understand what's happening trish stratus is using you stark said she's the baddest woman in wwe and that's when we got shina baszler who received <laughs> a very big pop from the wwe audience when she said that she well basically retired around the rousey she got her out of the wwe crowd erupts with thank, thank you, you shina, shina chance yeah. she says i've heard you said you're the baddest woman on the planet and Shaina says that she is so Becky Lynch says Adam Pierce come out here and make it official we got the match it was fine very two similar gimmicks I would say anyway yeah. so it was kind of exciting we saw Becky Lynch watching drinking lemonade now did you guys get that reference okay mm -hmm. let's talk about it again Becky Lynch was not at SummerSlam she was pissed she posted this picture of her you know with lemons because WWE are handing her Lemons. Lemons, and yeah. during the press conference, Triple H said, well, yep. sometimes you just gotta make lemonade Lem out of lemons. lemons. And that's exactly what Becky yep. did. <laughs> she, made, she listens to her boss. She made this lemonade. Is what is happening <laughs> right here. Well, Shaila Baszler, of course, won the match, and Becky Lynch was, well, again, taking shots at Triple, Triple H. Right. Uh -huh. I don't know. It's probably lighthearted. Maybe they talked about it. I don't know. I honestly don't know. Maybe we're taking it to be I mean, because he was definitely in part of the show, so he would know... You know what I'm saying? They cut to the camera of her doing the Triple H thing. So I'm pretty sure they had their conversation. Like, hey, I'm going to do this. He's like, All right, go ahead and do it. I'm pretty sure. Most likely. There's no way he didn't know. They cut to her doing that. They cut to her drinking lemonade multiple times. There's no way they don't know that. If that's the case, they don't cut to her doing that. And they probably have somebody on the headset say, hey, cut it out. So seriously but yes becky lynch is probably pissed i i, I get that i also get where triple h is coming from the, sh the paper is way too long, too long maybe yeah. some matches should have been shorter you know shayla but says one day i'll be coming for you and becky says you know where to find me man's restroom <laughs> you get it? stupid marcus the man yeah i got it it's a horrible joke. <laughs> it is, Holy but... Yeah, it seems cool. like Shayna Baszler is finally getting real rivalries. Appreciate that. We got Thank Ludwig you. Kaiser versus Otis. Yeah, a bit of a filler, but not that bad if I'm being honest. You know, I'm a big fan of Otis, Chad Gable, so I'll let it pass. So uh, we got the distraction and Ludwig Kaiser won the match. Chad Gable is looking like a man right here. Yeah. I've already seen that match. I didn't talk about it because I didn't make a review, but great. Right? I think we can all agree these two are going to have another banger. Let's For talk sure. about The Miz and Ooh. LA Knight. Yeah. He rants about how people stopped showing respect to veterans. He mentions how the fans love this LA Knight guy. But Miz is a veteran and a locker room leader. He was thought to show respect introduce yourself when you walk into a locker room shake hands he's tired of being disrespected from the so-called new talent we see LA Knight big pop and wanted course. to introduce himself but the Miz didn't shake his hand Miz says LA Knight is what you get when you strip away all the good from the Miz mm. just a flavor of the month LA Knight is nothing but an attitude era fanboy playing cosplay in his ring Ooh. people chant tiny balls LA Knight says I don't have a problem with you which don't want to make this personal. And then The Miz goes on another right. rant. And he talks about personal. his history in the WWE, all of his accomplishments. He made himself indestructible to anyone in the locker room. He's been out here for 20 years. What has LA Knight done? Already a very good promo, you know, mm -hmm. making it personal. This is where The Miz is at his best, right? For sure. Just ranting about shit. But this is where it got good. Oh, LA yeah. Knight says, so personal it is. All these years, he's been making himself a dangerous man. He's been scratching and clawing, looking in from the outside while this place 
I found all the wrong mm. horses, including yeah. the yeah. mare's wallet. He was that just was waiting so for the good. right opening. You're here because you're safe. They knew they could kick Miz around and <laughs> kick him out of the locker room, and he would take it. <laughs> L.A. Knight is... This was so... He... The Miz was cooking, but L.A. Knight said, I'm a chef too, my boy. I'm a CEO cooking and raise it even higher. He said, you were the safe bet. They knew they can kick you out the locker room because what are you going to do about it? You're safe, Miz, and that's always what they've been, people have said. The Miz, even just in his comparison to his in-ring work, he's a safe guy. He doesn't take too many risks. Some can say that's good. Some can say that's a little bit, you know, on the safe side. But this was just a good back and forth. I'm, I'm invested. I'm ready to see what happens. Even though, once again, it doesn't make sense part of the brand split but i'm still here for it not about that he's a dangerous man he's not a pushover he's not to be messed with and that's the difference l knight said that miz's career doesn't matter anymore because it's down the toilet he doesn't mind making miz a stepping stone and walk <laughs> into the main event scene and miz is angry i'm not a stepping stone i'm a main eventer l knight says chill i'm not talking about these two little stepping stones you're not on my level while well, i'm looking you right in the face prove me wrong the miz was about to fight then he has there then of course the miz using miz tactics yeah of you course. know what he still got his ass kicked la knight got a huge pop and even got to shake miz's <laughs> hand so far out of everything we've seen i'm not necessarily saying this was the best segment from la knight maybe it is i don't know but this is where i felt like okay this guy is a star and wwe are going to take him seriously everything in this promo everything he Ooh, said was basically about a push and how he's going to be a main eventer. He even talked about the Miz being a stepping stone, terms that WWE don't really use. Mm -hmm. I'm very excited about this rivalry. Oh, sure. A lot of times WWE would put someone against the Miz or Dolph Ziggler. It doesn't always work and it doesn't mm -hmm. work not because the Miz or Ziggler are bad. It's because people don't care about their opponents. Well, they do care about LA Knight. The Miz is very good at what he does. It's gonna be really, really I awesome. Can't also, the New wait. Day made the return against the Viking Raiders, and of course, they picked up the W. Got a huge crowd pop as mm -hmm. well. Good. The tag team division needs them, I believe, since Chad Gable is now going to focus on his singles career, I believe. Uh, I'm okay with it. You know, I didn't necessarily miss the New Day that much. I, I think we've seen the same gimmick for what, like, 10 years now, which yeah, I get it, you know, they sell a lot of merch, people love them, I love them, they're great. I'm just saying they need something different, uh, but I think we need to save that until Big E, you know, returns to the WWE. Finally, we got if the main event, six-man tag. I never have a lot to say about these matches. They're fun, but they're kind of meaningless in a way. Yeah. What I don't like about it is that it almost feels like, especially with Monday Night Raw, that it ends the same way. Uh -huh. it, it feels like I'm watching, at the end of Raw, Every Raw, I'm watching the same six-man tag team match with mm -hmm. uh, one different wrestler most of the time. But at least we got something special in the end. So, of course, we got a lot of interferences, but Sami Zayn came back, so he helped them out. Cool finish, and the babyface team wins. All of a sudden, Shinsuke Nakamura <laughs> turns on Seth Rollins. My man snapped. It seems like this is a rivalry we're going to get right now, so I guess Finn Balor is not focusing on the World Heavyweight Championship anymore. I'm not sure. I believe Seth versus Shinsuke is going to be a great match. We've already seen it at Survivor Series mm -hmm. in like 2019 or 18. I don't necessarily remember. It was a banger, so I know the match is going to be good. Is Shinsuke Nakamura right now in 2023 a credible opponent? He could be, but he's someone that I don't see winning the World oh, yeah. Away Championship. You know, he's not the guy to beat Seth Rollins. Mm. It's obvious. That was your Monday Night Raw, a pretty decent show. I'm just interested in what's going on with LA Knight or The Miz. Is LA Knight so over that WWE want to use him on both Raw and SmackDown, or is he moving to Raw? But I do have a question for you guys. Are you excited about Shinsuke versus mm. Seth Rollins, or did you kind of lost interest in uh, Shinsuke Nakamura over the years? Let me know in the comments below. Thank you for watching this video, my peeps. Like, subscribe. Hey, man, I'm going to go ahead and give the homie a like, and y'all should too. Go to this video, give him a like, man. Dude always puts on, uh, makes some great content or whatnot, man. Uh, yeah, I'm with him. I'm excited. LA Knight, The Miz, let's get this going. Don't know if he's going to be on both shows. We'll see. I don't want them to overdo it. But with this feud with The Miz, sign me up, as I say. 
Um, also, I am somewhat interested in what they do with Shinsuke. I am uh, interested in what they do with Shinsuke and Seth. I do think they'll have a good match. It'll be interesting to see his approach going forward, how Seth feels about it. I am interested. So they, they have some storylines that they can really pick up. I'm looking forward to seeing how things play out. But comment down below and let me know. Are you guys just as excited for LA Knight in the Miz? Because I know I am. Promos should be good. And I think the match itself should be a good one as well. But I appreciate all love and support. Blah, support. Road to 150K. And I'm still young. This the YouTube wrestling champ of the world. Appreciate y'all kicking with me. See y'all next one. Peace.